All right, we are going to very quickly just run through some kind of basic logistics con stuff, and then we'll get to the fun stuff later. Um, the fun stuff. He's at the end. So, um, welcome to ShmooCon. It is our 16th year of doing this. To add um, a little bit of perspective to that, um, I was one child less when we started, and the other one was like one, and the oldest one was like four, and now they are graduating from college, graduating from high school, and in third grade. So it's, um, it's, been, a, it's been a wild ride, right? Yeah. yeah. God, I cannot, this is just, <laughs> it's like going up my nose. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, is that better? I, don't, I mean, we can do it like that. <laughs> it's just weird. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> this just needs to go away. <laughs> okay, let's just keep going. All right, so we're going to do the who, what, when, where, and why of ShmooCon soup. That is not working for me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, it's good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get really used to hearing the sound of my voice. It's my favorite thing. Um, so we're gonna just going to, like I said, start really quick with the Who of ShmooCon. First and foremost, uh, our staff. Our staff is obviously sitting all around the room. We are wearing a, they, because I am not, are wearing a sapphire shirt. Um, Carson, can you demonstrate your shirt, your shirt color? This is our fashion show, our ShmooCon fashion show. Okay, thank you. Um, oh my gosh. I will never ask Carson to do that again. Um, one thing that we do a little differently here at ChmooCon is that you might notice that every single one of our staff members is in the same color shirt. And we do this on purpose. I really like the way that you explain this. Um, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, so the idea of putting everybody in the same shirt is that you don't need to know the role that anyone has, what their job is. If you need help for any reason, you can approach somebody in one of these shirts. Is it teal? I forget what it's, this. It's sapphire. Sapphire. You can approach someone in a sapphire shirt um, and say, hey, I need help. And the help can be anything from I need to find a bathroom to I'm having a uh, um, personal issue. There's something's happened that you need to be aware of. Um, I have a question about a track, whatever. Approach them. If they don't know the answer, their role is to help you find the answer, to help you get you in touch with the person who can help you, can assist you, and, and help make things better. So if you have a question, concern, comment, whatever, find somebody in a sapphire shirt. That's a fun word. Um, and uh, approach them, and they'll be happy to help. So we do this for slightly other reasons, too, and part of that is that our staff feels supported. So um, we have set up most of our stations so that almost every single staff member will always have line of sight to another staff member. And then the fact that we're all in the same shirts means that we can all see each other. So um, we think that's really cool. I know that you guys use that feature all the time. And then I hide. Right? Right. I like to blend in with the masses. Um, if you, need, if you have questions, RegDesk is always a great place to start. Those guys up there um, should know most of the answers, and um, they're busy. There's people there all the time, so you, that's a good place to go if you need that. Um, Bruce, do you want to talk about security at ShmooCon.org? He's like, what? What? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So um, I'm trying to watch you on Twitch right now, actually. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Um, Would you like me to Twitch? <laughs> no, actually, and also I, I'm stumped by the MFA because my token's at home, so I can't actually watch you. <laughs> Wow, that worked out great. Um, so uh, we actually have an alias set up that we monitor during the con, uh, security at shmoocon.org. This is uh, uh, monitored 24 hours a day. Like, literally, we mean it. There's people who are West Coasties who stay up late and watch this alias for us until we get up in the morning. Um, this is if you need assistance and you can't find one of the Sapphire shirts, uh, I would encourage you to email us at security at shmoocon.org. Let us know the nature of the problem, what's going on, and we'll do everything we can to assist you. Don't forget to leave contact information, because if you're sending it through an anonymous email, it's not super helpful to find you at 4 o'clock in the morning. So uh, by all means, if uh, you have any concerns or something's going on, please email us. Thank you. And, and please, this isn't for, like, it's hot in here. Yeah. Can we turn down yeah. the AC? Like, this which, is truly, like, if there's an issue. Which I think you said you got two emails last year? And one was, it was hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a security concern, right? It can, unless, unless it's, like, 200 degrees, right? Like, uh, that starts to uh, life safety. If hot fire. Yeah. 
Like, that's a good one. Actually, just call 911. Don't even tell us. We'll figure it out. Um, all right, moving on. So who else is here? Our sponsors are here. Um, we like to really challenge our sponsors to bring fun games, fun, fun atmospheres to the con. I think they've always, for the most part, really met that challenge. So go check them out. A lot of them are running contests, um, giving away cool stuff. I don't know. What else are they doing? This is a conversation. Oh, yes. Um, Could you get off your phone, I'm, try I'm trying to watch you. It's really enthralling to I'm me. I'm here. Look, okay. eyes this way. It's <laughs> actually hoping to freak you out with it. I um. am totally freaked out. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. OK. Stop it. Keep going. OK, Kay. I'm just going to keep going. All right, who else? Ooh, I went too far. How do I go back? Somebody? <laughs> They're like, let me, let me help you, Heidi. Huzzah. Ooh, um, yes. Oh, I'm so confused now. So this year we have 58 speakers at ChmooCon. What's really cool about this is 43 of them are new to our conference, and 10 of those 43 have never spoken at a major conference before. So for those of you who are new to ChmooCon, who here is new to ChmooCon? Wow, oh, that's cool. All right. So one of the things we really focus on is new to, um, new to the community and new to us speakers. So I, I, 43 out of 58 haven't been here before. I like that. That's awesome. These are all pictures of past speakers, including my little guy who um, is now a third grader. But I don't know. He's talking into a dead mic for hours. It was great. Oh, he does. <laughs> all right. Who else is here? Schmoozers and students. So um, I have a really soft spot for students. Um, this year, we run a Schmoozer student program, which is um, Schmoozers, as we call them, pay kind of a heightened uh, fee for tickets. It's $400, and that fee goes to cover their ticket, a ticket for a student, and then $100 towards a stipend for that student, and then ShmooCon kicks in another $100, making that stipend $200. So this year, um, we accepted 96 students and 48 Schmoozers. That's more than any other year. Who's here as a student? It's a lot of hands behind you, so lots of students. Who's here as a schmoozer? If you want to be identified, go ahead and raise your hand. Excellent. So they just got finished with a big meetup in um, one of the back rooms. We put them together. They get to talk. They get to form mentorships. I know that some of those relationships have lasted for years, so I get really super, super excited about that. One of the fun things we do with that program is we ask our students to send us pictures. So these are, we had a couple climbing photos. I thought that was cool. Some of these were more creative. I don't know, that's a really mini me down there on the kind of middle one. And then, for some reason, we got a lot of pet pictures this year. I don't Lots think that cats. one's a pet. I think he's wearing a mask. Um, I didn't know. <laughs> I just wanted to be fair. Wow. OK. So anyway, lots of students here. They're lots of fun. We did not get any pictures of dinner. <laughs> one guy has just sent a piece of him with holding a piece of chicken. And one year, one guy sent himself wearing a keyboard. Yes. That was good. And he was laid out on a table, too. It wasn't just like an awkward holding it in front of himself. He had really was, staged yeah, the photo. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, he got yeah, accepted. Yeah, he got accepted. <laughs> I mean, hello. Um, all right. So she did actually scream when she opened it. Like, ah! Come here, look at this. And I'm like, why would you do that to me? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anything. All right, so who else is here? We've got members of the service academies here. We've got West Point, we've got Navy, we've got Coast Guard. Ooh, Coasties from Alaska, I love you guys. Um, members of the press, and of course, you guys in the audience. So, do you want to say anything about them? You are awesome. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Thank you, random caller. I love you, random citizen. Anyone know that movie? Thank Woo you. You have children. <laughs> or not. Maybe they do. Or not. I, it's, it's a damn good movie, but I, when you I, watch I, it a hundred times, you memorize the whole thing. All right. Bruce, the next slide's all you. Oh, it is? Um, I, just, I just declared that. Oh, okay. It's keeping me on my toes? Trying. Trying. All right. So um, we are... It's, they're behind me, so it's really awkward. Well, you can stand here. Well, I can I just will, face the thing, too. I will too. relinquish the nose picker. No, it's all right. So, um, <laughs> ostensibly, we have, <laughs> we have talks um, talking about coronavirus, eh? Um, That's at the end. So, um, uh, we all know that conferences are more about 
they're more than just the talks, but the talks are something we take very seriously. Um, it's something that uh, um, Heidi will touch on as far as like our program committee process, but uh, you know, we try to be a venue that's open to, to new speakers, to new ideas. Um, I think for those that have followed us for a while, we've generally biased away toward offensive talks because we're really in there like fixing the thing as opposed to figuring out how to break it because we're familiar with the asymmetry of that. Um, and, and so I, I think that the, the talks are super important, but there's lots of other stuff going on. Wireless CTF is back yet again. Uh, they have an entire room for themselves. They're very approachable, contrary to how some of them, like Rick, look. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sorry, Mr. Farina, if you're watching anywhere. He's not. He is, he's, he's not totally watching, I assure not, you, yeah. he is not. Uh, please, if you have interest in, in wireless, and, and if you're even if not familiar, go in, they'll educate you, they'll get you up to speed. It's a very approachable uh, program they have in there. Um, Lockpick Village. How many people have never picked a lock before? This is a hacker wow. con, I love it. I was like, yeah, I, I understand how locks work, damn it. Um, so uh, Lockpick Village is back. Uh, we have an amateur radio exam. How many people take the exams this year? Woohoo! A couple of people very excited to study their book in the next day. <laughs> Cram it. Excellent. As the world falls apart, we'll need more ham radio operators. So, uh, Schmookenography is one of potentially several contests being run here at the con. Uh, it is uh, what gave us the Stargate, actually, for anyone who's familiar with the Stargate. Yes. So, you guys, the Stargate, and we're in, I will tell the story at closing, but. For those of you who have been here multiple, multiple years, I am horrified to have to announce that the Stargate has been reinforced and will now last even longer. Now, what's, what's funny is the back of the Stargate's been reinforced. The outside, the front looks the front terrible, right? It's so just beaten to hell. But it's not going to fall apart in that way anymore. So. Or, or during closing ceremonies. Yeah. Uh, barcode Sparcode is basically how to make the most creative barcode that still scans. There are some already very creative uh, uh, barcode entries out there. You still have time to enter uh, if you want to create something here. Uh, Fire talks. There's probably a Michaels close by. What? There's, there's probably a Michaels. Close there's by. a Michaels, or if you're artistic, you can just draw it, right? Um, uh, Fire talks are tonight in this room after all the other talks are done. Uh, we have labs, which is uh, basically our attempt to turn volunteer building of the network into something educational. Oh, oh, no, they're not. They pay. Oh, right. They pay. <laughs> it's a revenue generator for us. So, uh, you know, we get people to pay us for the luxury to come in early and build the network based on whatever parts have been sitting in storage for a year that I'm sure work perfectly in non-climate controlled storage. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. Uh, and then finally, uh, one that's near and dear to my heart, uh, Hack Fortress. Uh, actually started kind of as a, uh, well, we used to have Hacker Halo for those that were around back in the day. Uh, and then I uh, um, kind of started doing like a TF2 tournament because of a talk at DEF CON where I showed up an hour early and we had a LAN party in the room beforehand, which was kind of weird. Uh, and then we merged the whole thing together into Hack Fortress. So two TF2 teams playing each other, two hacking teams solving challenges, and they work together and can interact in the game environment. So if a hacker achieves an objective, they can execute something in the game environment, like set the other team on fire. Uh, and now we have it hooked into Twitch, I think. So if you're on Twitch, you can actually like, people can vote and just set the other team on fire without even having to hack them, so it's great. Do, um, do you know if all the teams are full? If I would assume the teams are not full. They are not full. Yeah, so sign up on right, the so Hack Fortress. If you want to sign up and, or just form a team with people in the audience, I have a third grader who would love to play TF2 for you. You also can sign up as an individual and they'll just group you together. You don't need to have 10 friends here. Well, you should. I was going to make a joke. I couldn't even come up with one. So. All right. All there, right. I did that slide. Okay. This slide's yours. How do you know? Because I, I said so. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, right? That's yeah. what I was going to say. I was going to say, I'm my rubber, radio glue. says one. <laughs> one. <laughs> what does your radio say? It's a floating point number. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What, what does your radio say? It says three, actually. So. Oh, I wonder who got two. I don't know. <laughs> we don't care. All right, so um, what else is going on? Contests, they are literally everywhere. I can't tell you too much because it's up to you to pick the pieces apart and figure out which ones belong to what. Um, most of them have prizes. In fact, I think all of them do. Saturday night party, Saturday night party happens in this room. You will be entering from the terrace level, which is one floor up. Come down the stairs. If you need assistance getting into the room, we'll bring you in the back way. So just let us know ahead of time. Um, it is an all-ages party. The way this works, 
house beer, house wine, you know, some soft drinks, all that kind of stuff is um, open bar. Okay. Everything else requires a drink ticket. We have a limited amount of those drink tickets because I have a limited amount of money. <laughs> so, um, so if you're drinking cocktails, you'll have to do the drink tickets. If you're drinking beer, wine, you go to a bar. We have two bars. I think they're going to be um, in that corner over there that are just um, non-alcoholic bars, so just sodas and stuff only. So if that's where you want to stay, then you know those are those are for you. The um, cocktails, once if you don't have a drink ticket, they have cash bars in the back. Um, you go and you pay your cash, you get a drink ticket, then you take it to... Yeah, it's complicated, right? But if I you can't solve the riddle of how to get the ticket, you probably need to stop drinking, so... True. That, that is true. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um, thanks to Aaron and Zach, who lead up my party crew. They, um, they do a really great job. This room looks totally different at night, right? Those of you who have been here before, this room totally transforms. It's really cool. I managed to bring Bruce down last year for the first time, and there was a fire alarm within 30 seconds of him getting down here. Yeah. Pretty I'm not coming back. Cool. We're going to talk about that again at the end, too. <laughs> yeah. that, was, that was my uns uns. <laughs> just to see Bruce dance. Okay, so um, this parking, the next bit and parking is not correct. I meant to edit the slide. We do have a 25% discount on Self Park. If you are staying at the hotel, your key card should get you that discount. If you are not staying at the hotel and self parking, you need to come to registration. We've got parking tickets there that will give you the discount. Ignore the line about the parking attendant. There is no parking attendant this year. So. Um, if you are off-site and parked here, come get the card. Otherwise, use your hotel key card. Got it? They're all like, we didn't park. We took the metro. Whatever. Um, okay, t-shirt charities. So the way that we do t-shirts at Schmidt. to the people at Reg, they will hand you a poker chip. That poker chip, you get to pick which charity bucket it lands in. So this year we are supporting the EFF, Hackers for Charity, and the No Starch um, Press Foundation, which um, pretty new, pretty cool. We just did our first run of um, monetary awards from that foundation. So I'm really excited about that. Um, anyway, those go on sale starting at... Three, I'm looking at people who might know better than me because it's in the program. Three, okay, a registration. I only wrote the program. I should know that off the top of my head. There's right. also a giant sign in front of Reg all day. There might be. Okay. But I was just going to go directly to my next point, that everything that we have said so far is in your program. I encourage you to open your bags. I encourage you to open your bags and look inside because sometimes every year, there are fun things hidden in the bags, and every year, almost no one finds them. <laughs> so that tells me a lot. Um, there's a couple of you out there who might have a very good day if you look in your bag. Hint, hint. So I will say, sometimes, at some point, someone will have a bad day, because at ShmooCon, I want to say six, um, the bags that we had had desiccant, the little packets in them, um, and we put all the desiccant packets into a bag and held them, and we thought about giving them away. We thought, no, we're just not going to be that big of a jerk. Oh my god, did you do that this year? No, we didn't, oh. but I have been storing a Schmookon backpack full of desiccant in my basement, waiting for the year when she's not noticing, I'm just going to dump it in somebody's bag, and someone's going to get a bunch of desiccant, and it'll be glorious. You know what's really funny? I can't say that word. Desiccant? I cannot say that word. If you eat some, it helps you say it. So yeah. this is where we tell the story about how we met. <laughs> oh, no, let's just keep on trucking. <laughs> now you're all wondering, aren't you? That's, they'll save that story for another day. All right, so if there's any changes in anything that's printed in the program, um, printed anywhere, I don't know, online, we'll, we'll tweet it, we'll twitch it, we'll tweet it, we'll tweet twitch it. it. We'll, we'll Twi twitcher tweet it. Twitcher, the twitchering. <laughs> We'll do things. We'll put, yeah, yeah. I'm old. I am so old. Um, she did ask our 17 year old son, what is it when you twitch? Is it twitching? Is it twitching? And, and he just looked at her like, up, you're crazy, mom. I'm like, stop it. Stop trying to be cool. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll make announcements at the start of most talks and stuff too, and we'll try to get the website updated on time. So, speaking of time, 
when do things happen? Well, go look at your schedule, right? So it's in the program, it's on banners outside of the rooms, it's online, and for those of you who have really, really good eyes and aren't like me, you can read those little tiny schedule cards we handed out to all of you. And Hacker Tracker and Confu. So there's a couple places that you can look online as well. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, this part's fun. Did I leave? Oh, I left myself notes. Okay. So we are standing in Bring It On and One Track Mind, right? To our right. So I have notes, so I know which direction. Oh, wait, it says to your right. Shit. <laughs> that, <laughs> that wasn't confusing at all. Right. Um, no, no, that's right. That's, that's build it. That's build it to your right. It's in capital letters. I was like, is that my right or is that your right? I'm changing my notes. That's build it, that's belay it. Okay, build it, belay it, bring it on. Got it, they're all doing it with me. They are, yeah, that was like, cute. Yeah. Like all three of them, yeah. <laughs> Someone's got a melodica? Yes. <laughs> Jeez, that's the coolest instrument ever, sir. <laughs> Said no one ever about a melodica. <laughs> Also, we own one. We own one, yes. My son crap. has one, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the rest of um, the rooms are all down the Crystal Corridor, which is that big, long hallway. Is that, that what it's called? It is called the Crystal <laughs> Corridor. <laughs> it's a place of magic and mystery at Wireless CTF. <laughs> <laughs> the next slide is yours. <laughs> I had no idea it was called the Crystal Corridor. I even made the Trail Map t-shirt last year, and I didn't call it the Crystal Corridor. I wish I... Damn it! <laughs> so, the, um, uh, the genesis of this event, uh, to go back in time, uh, was actually at uh, Black Hat, like, 17 years ago. And uh, Beetle, who I don't think is here yet, but he will be here on Sunday. Uh, Beetle was a schmoo at the time, and he and I were at a talk at Black Hat, and somebody on stage said something outlandish. It was basically like one and one is three. Um, and normally I'm a jerk, and I'll be like, no, you're wrong. Um, I tend not to be shy in those situations, but in that case I thought, no, I'll shut up and let somebody else be the jerk, and no one was the jerk. And nobody held the person on stage to account that said the false thing. And Beetle says, man, if we ran a con, we would never let that happen. And I'm like, damn right, fist bump. And it's like, we should run a con. I'm like, yeah, we totally should. We are drinking beer in Vegas and talking about things that we want to do in the future, and it will never come to pass. And then uh, a month later, Beetle's like, so I reserve the Warman Park Marriott. No, no, Beetle was like, so I took out a second mortgage on my house, and I didn't tell my wife, so we got to make this work so I can pay it back before she notices. That's what Beetle said. I was going to reserve that, but okay. No, anyway, I'm just going to throw it right Throw it right, right out now. there, just right, poof. So anyway, um, and we thought we would, you know, um, uh, have this event, and, and obviously it happened and grew, and, and it's been successful. But during the process of planning, we're like, how do we have, um, how do we hold people on stage to account, right? So how Bruce do you, had an idea. I had an idea that we could throw things at people, because <laughs> Blues Brothers. So it's... Were we all too young for Blues Brothers references? Like, this is, okay, a few, yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, get, get the band back together. So. Wait, who, wait, who, who has seen Blues Brothers? Okay, okay thank God. God. <laughs> the Mount Blues Brothers 2000, we shall never speak of that. The, um, we decided that we wanted to be able to throw things at people, and so we decided that the best way to have discourse was to throw squishy foam rubber balls at the speaker if you disagreed. And so that was the genesis of Shmoobolics, because we didn't want to have the microphone here to come up, because whenever we had the microphone, someone's going to come up and be like, hi, my name is Jim. I, uh, I have four beautiful granddaughters, and my grandson's in jail. And, uh, and then they just ramble on, and then they have some question that's more of a statement, and it just goes on, and like, no one wants that, right? Like, it derails the whole thing. So the ball is a much more instantaneous, visceral, and anonymous way of getting your point across. Except, you know? except. <laughs> sometimes people can't throw. Um, we may not be the most coordinated lot, um, and I've been hit from point blank range with as hard as someone could throw, which turns out was really hard. Do you see uh, that? It's right there. Oh, oh yeah, getting beamed in the, in the head. 
Oh, that was, that was what the... No, I, the gun hit him in the chest. Yeah, the gun got me cruise. in the chest. Yeah. There was a gun once. Um, yeah, anyway, we, we, so... Yeah, we made the schmoo ball gun. This year, the schmoo ball is actually a schmoose, uh, the squishy moose that you have. Uh, we would encourage you to keep up the discourse. So if you disagree with the speaker... Um, you don't actually have to throw... You don't have to throw it. You can threaten them viciously. Moose do not fly. The do, no, I'm not even getting into it, sir. So, so I would encourage you, um, uh, think about it though at the very least, when people are up on stage here, uh, just because they're up on stage does not necessarily mean they're correct. So we encourage you to use your own thought and think about what they're telling you um, and challenge it if it's appropriate, right? Uh, either you know talk to the speaker or at least internally with yourself, like figure out what you think is true. So uh, yeah, talk to the voices in your head. Um, and what's funny about that, uh, <laughs> These little domey things are pretty good parabolas, um, and they'll reflect sound weirdly. And so, like, I can sometimes hear your conversations out there when you're whispering because they bounce off, and I hear them, and it really throws me off because I'm sitting here and I hear these voices, and I'm like, <laughs> so just so you know, when you're whispering about he slagging on us, I can too. hear you. Okay, was that good enough for that slide? Yeah, I guess. Oh, that's jeez. I give that like a B. That was a pretty hard, hard bar yeah. there. Anyway, okay. if there's more that you want to know about the conference itself, we do the own the con session. You do not have to attend. It is taped. Please go see our other speakers. It is really just Bruce and I on stage kind of telling the same jokes for the Doing this again. year in a row. Pretty boring. Oh, one year we gave people whiteboards and encouraged them to write things to the speaker on the whiteboards. We did that for exactly one year. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible idea. It was better than the ping pongs. Oh, yeah, 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 fair. fair. <laughs> or ping pong balls, right? Yes. All right, so how do we do this? I, I, this is, it's such an army of people um, who help us put on. Are you signaling to me? No, I was okay. checking the time. Okay, um, and uh, just an army of people. So we have 95 volunteers on staff, but it goes way beyond that. But first of all, my staff in the room, can you stand up? And by proxy, accept the applause you're going to get for my other staff that is not in the room. Frank, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Todd, I'm looking at you. All right. Awesome. So um, these amazing people turn up year after year. I have very little turn in my volunteer corps. Um, I always joke that it's because that's how they get tickets, but um, it, it's not a lie. <laughs> it's totally not a lie. So, but they show up every year and they put in they put in so many hours. We actually have a breakdown of hours um, in the own the con. If you're interested, again, you can just watch it later. You don't need to attend the session. Um, we also get a huge amount of support from the community at large, not just like the InfoSec community, but I'm talking like our neighbors come over and, I mean, they've shoveled our driveway in times of, in times of dire need, right? And not this not year. This, this year, year we haven't had winter, Team Shadow. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, that was three people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, I don't know. Anyway, so we were bag stuffing at my house. Um, and uh, several of the kids there set up this moose army for the, with all the schmoose in your bags. And I just thought that was so cute. So I'm sharing the picture because they should get credit for that. All right. So thank you to the volunteers. Thank you for, to you for being here. We're going to do one more slide, and then we'll have some fun. Um, Shmoocon survival. <laughs> You're like, yay, fun. Because it's been torture up till now. <laughs> just you wait. All right, so um, I'll let you do the first one with that virus named after the beer. Um, yeah, and regardless of what you think of uh, the global health crisis and all that, it, the, the one thing that we know to be true from any hacker con is con flu is a real thing that some large subset of us will go home the day after this and get pretty sick from something that you probably got off of someone else's hand or the bar or whatever. So Don't um, lick the windows. Yeah, don't lick the windows. It's bad. <laughs> But the railings are okay. So um, wash your hands often. There is hand sanitizer floating around, too. Um, some of it has El Cantaro's face on it, which is really disturbing. Um, but uh, the bathrooms, if, if there's any issues with the bathrooms, let us know. The facilities are you know, trying I to keep us up. I think he's just saying everything. wash your hands. That's wash your hands, saying. and then saying don't wash your hands. touch your face. It's I did a, that this morning for the staff, and I demonstrated, and I proceeded to plow my hands yeah. all over my face. And so, and also get some rest. I mean, like, this is, I mean, I know people like staying up and hang out with their friends, but try to get some sleep. Because um, regardless, again, of, of like global health issues, we would like you all healthy. So a few, you know, good habits this weekend will keep you at work on Monday and Tuesday, which I know you really want to do. All right. So um, 
we have a tiny bit of history with fire alarms <laughs> at Schmoocon. It's kind of a thing. Um, we'll talk about the coffee shop later. Yeah. For those of you who know some Schmoocon history, that's a different story. Um, but we want to talk about fire alarms in general, because last year we were quite surprised when um, we didn't get anybody to actually leave the building. So when the hotel staff is actively evacuating the building, that's a pretty big clue that you should too. Um, yes. So um, uh, a couple things. One, if you don't know, in hotels like this, a lot of times alarms are localized, meaning you get the floor that the alarm's on and the floor above and below, and that's the ones they want you out of. Um, and so if you're on a floor that the fire alarm's going off, like your job is to get down to the ground floor, at least to the point where the fire alarm isn't going off. Since we were on the ground floor and we had a fire alarm during the party, uh, it meant that we had to herd people out of here and down the hall. And so we've, we were fortunate a little bit last year that we happened to have a bullhorn um, and we could kind of corral people out, out the hallway and out the door. But I would encourage you, if there is a fire alarm in such a situation again, I know you want to be in the party or whatever, but just walk. And if there are people behind you, keep walking, right? Because if you're in the front of the line, the people in the back of the line can't go anywhere. So we really want people to like continue to egress, follow directions, and get away from things. We will open the doors back up, you can, assuming the building's still standing, and you can, you can come back in keep drinking, keep having a good time. So if that happens even here, like it's like being at the bottom of an escalator, totally. right? So what? Oh, go ahead. When you go down an escalator and you don't know what to do next, don't stop, like, right? Like it's the one thing, it's not to be like, huh, where should, like, everyone's gonna pile on. Sorry, dude. Um, oh, so strangling them. So, um, you know, just keep walking. So in the instance of a fire alarm, same deal. Just keep walking, don't stop if there's still people behind you because we need to get you safely out of the building, so. Preferably walk towards an exit. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I should have given <laughs> a vector as a direction, right? Like, <laughs> just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Thanks. We, uh, we were at a hotel in New York last year. We told the story at closing last year, but um, we, were, we were in one room and our kids were in another room and there was a fire alarm. It was like 11 o'clock at night, so we just kind of said goodnight. So the fire alarm goes off, Bruce and I grab our shoes and we call our kids, right? We're like, make sure that they're doing the right thing. We call them and they're already on the first floor. Like they were, they were gone. Gone. <laughs> They're like. <laughs> they followed I, directions well. We we were very proud of them, and we felt a little left behind. To yeah, be right. honest. <laughs> Your mom and dad perished, but you made it safe. <laughs> so we were very proud of them. Um, so how to be happy on Monday? Make sure you're sleeping. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. Get some food to eat. And it's our hope that you meet lots of new people, learn lots of new things, and get inspired. Because that's what that's why we do this. Yes, absolutely. All right. Speaking of. Speaking of. All right, so um, should I stand up? Yes. Okay. Oh. So, so first of all, that was Heidi's first opening of the con all on her own. No, so, it wasn't on my own. We still did Well, together. we still did it together, but she led. So a big round of applause for Heidi, who. She wasn't kidding. This is very disconcerting. Like, <laughs> hi. <laughs> so, I'm gonna. Uh, I have some thoughts as I so normally. You can sit. Can I, can I hold him? Yeah, I thought you were gonna take the mic. Um, so I'm gonna try to drag her into this conversation as well. So every year, for those who've seen me rant, I've tried to say something of import, and I get angry. And I think I told Aaron to shut up once. Um, I still feel a little bad about how aggressively I did that. <laughs> Actually, to be clear, I said cyber, she said drink, and I said shut up, and it was very, yeah, it was, it was a good conversation, I think, yeah, yeah, I still feel bad about it. Um, but there was this guy on Twitter the other day, as things happen, uh, and he had some uh, uh, thread where he's like, for every, oh, I thought she left me, I was like, holy shit, she's gone. For every week, retweet, what? Our, our son's like, where was I during the fire alarm? Oh, we left you in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you came with us, buddy. You were with us. Um, anyway, this guy had this, this thread, and he said, for every like, retweet or like this thread gets, I'll give like one presentation tip. And it, got, like, it blew up, and he had all these presentation tips. And I read through them, and I actually agreed with most of them. And then I got to this one, and it really it struck me. So uh, no matter what your call to action is, expect a tiny percentage of the audience to rise to it at best, right? Um, and I have certainly stood here on this stage getting angry about the state of the industry and calling on some call to action for people to go do a thing. Um, and invariably, no one does the thing, right? And it, not that I have any expectations, but it does kind of 
get to the discussion of like why. Why can we have like a visceral response to something that we disagree with or a thing we need to change and then we all agree yeah and then some guy on stage says we should do it and we say yeah and then doesn't happen, right? Why is that? So Heidi and I were actually talking about this the other day um, as part of our ShmooCon epilogue keynote which we filmed in a car um, because Heidi doesn't like to talk to cameras so instead we just had a conversation in a car much like we do here on stage and filmed it and called it a talk. Um, Apparently it's been done by celebrities before, which I didn't realize until later. So um, Jay Leno or whoever the kids watch these days is doing it as well. So <laughs> we, we, we did get we coffee. We did go get coffee. Yeah, actually. They're, they're apparently it's super cliche. I had not realized how cliched uh, it actually was. So um, the, to get someone to change their behavior, to, to do something new, requires a lot of emotional effort to take the first step, right? Step zero requires like, I am upset enough, I'm motivated enough, I'm whatever, I'm gonna do something new and different. Um, and it's oftentimes like, I have a little bit of rage, but not enough rage to get over that first step. Once you take the first step, the following subsequent steps are easy, right? Um, but <laughs> Render's wearing my face on a shirt and he thinks it's fantastic and I hate him for it. <laughs> but I not have enough emotional energy to do anything about it. So that's, this is where you see I'm not, I'm not doing a new, a new thing, so. Are you pulling money out of your pocket? What? No, I'm nervously fidgeting with my butt. Oh my God, Chris Potter. Look at me. My back wow. pocket, it's okay. I just, oh, the hand sanitizer. Thanks, Render. <laughs> so, I am so sorry. Yeah, this is really. <laughs> so this don't is. Touch yeah, don't touch my face. Yes, thank you. See? Thank oh you. That God. was. That you was outstanding. Um, so anyway, I, I think uh, um, you know th this is um, human nature, right, for us to do this. So it got us talking about what what could we do, like what could we call for on stage that isn't a call for doing something new. And so you may have guessed it. Um, we want to focus on helping you do what you're doing already, but only better, right? So this is more of like a philosophical concept. I don't want you to go out and have a new job. I don't want you to go out and join some new group because honestly every new group that I join I never have time for and I don't do anything and, and I'm sure many of you are like that as well. So this is a cute little catchphrase, but what does it actually mean? Like what does better imply? So when I say be better, one of the first things is like, I could do a better job like quality wise, right? Like this is the first thing, you know. Um, I, I know as a kid when, you know, someone's like, you should have done that better. I'm like, yeah, I colored outside the lines. I misspelled all the words. Like I clearly need to be better at my trade where my trade is being a second grader. So, um, and, and this is kind of a trite example, right? But it's one that I think is, is um, to me important in my career as I progressed and, and I know that there are times I sit on my laurels and I don't focus on doing the quality work that I should be doing anymore. Um, and even with a con, like I think one of the challenges that we have a little bit is that we've been doing this long enough that uh, we're on autopilot at times. And, and like this year, to be frank, like you have kind of boring badges because I got behind on getting badges done and because I was just used to like, oh, pulling it out of my ass at the last minute and then you have regular plain old badges because I couldn't do the thing that I wanted to do. Um, and so that could have been better. And in hindsight, like I should have been more on the ball. But I mean. I like the badges. Well, I like them too. I think they turned out okay. But um, not to be all, you know, downer on myself. But I mean, we do get it. Well, you know to the day, like here's what you need to do to get the con done. Um, and you're way better about attention to detail. She's way better about attention to detail than I am. Like there are things that Surprise. I know I'm phoning in. She's like, that's not centered. I'm like, okay, got it. Like there's a lot of art that I do that isn't centered up. She makes sure it's centered up. I, th I actually think he does it on purpose. <laughs> Trolling your wife for a hundred, Alex. Uh, I don't necessarily do it on purpose. It is kind of fun sometimes. As I um, am now centering the mic on this piece of paper. Yeah, right, I was doing that too, so. <laughs> Um, it turns, never mind. They're just gonna keep on cruising. Just gonna um, start drawing. So when you move past higher quality and you think, okay, like what's next? Something that I've seen in this industry for a long time is the fact that we think like we're the coolest people in the world. Um, like we think that security exists because we need security, not because it's support of some higher purpose. Um, I've worked in departments where security was convinced that they were the purpose the entire multi-billion dollar company existed was to employ these five people to say no all the time, right? And like that is 
clearly not the case. When you're doing a red team, when you're doing a pen test, when you're doing some activity, you are supporting the broader mission of your organization, your company, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes it's hard to keep track of that, right? Because we can be really ornery and angry about things, um, but oftentimes we, uh, um, you know, stop thinking about the broader, the broader issue. And I think this has come up a few times again on Twitter. I live my life on Twitter, by the way. Um, I don't post a lot, but I do read a lot. Uh, a, a push against calling users idiots, right? Why? Users are the whole. I mean, it's Tron, man. Like straight up. Like, yeah, it's for the user. Damn it. Um, they didn't say damn it. It was a Disney movie, so it was gosh or something like that. But um, for the user, gosh. <laughs> that's that's my that's a T-shirt for next year. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Code hipster for the user, gosh. So um, at the. I struggle with this a lot because, like, you know, in my day job, I'm a, I'm a CISO, and I have to develop the security controls and maintain the security controls for, for our company. And you think about phishing as one of those examples where, like, the user is a key part of the security equation. And, like, to be blunt, I want my users to just close their eyes and click on things and everything to be okay, right? You can't. Thank, thank, thank Space Rogue, I appreciate you keeping me, keeping me motivated up here. Um, so, oh. you, what? <laughs> oh, what? What? The, come here. Come here, come here. So this is one son that I just disowned, and then there's another son I'm gonna disown over there. The middle son is okay, but that's because he's not here. So if anybody needs some sons, um, you can have them, so thank you. That's, this is my face on a, on a, on a t-shirt. Hey, you can go away now. Okay, perfect. They are apparently being distributed on the black market here. No. Yeah, you'll have to find Mubix, I think. A person. So, um, man, you disrailed my whole, my whole thing. Oh, when we tell users, like, don't open attachments for people you don't know, like, that's super cool if you're not a recruiter or a marketing person, right? Like, their whole job is to open attachments from people they don't know. <laughs> if you tell your salespeople, don't open attachments from things you don't know, like, sweet, I am not making my quota. Yay, check that magic out. You can just fire me now. Um, we need to design systems that allows users to be users, right? And we need to do it in a way that facilitates their job, not makes it harder. And it's a challenge, right? It's, and it, it doesn't really matter what your role is. Like, it, it, where I work, we think a lot about friction reduction from a security perspective. How do we reduce the friction of security on the organization itself? And I think there's a lot of value in that mindset, and it helps you keep the focus of, like, you're there to serve people, not for other people to make your life difficult, right? Which I think is often how, uh, how we view things. So, so, okay, we've had this do better quality things, then we've had this industry context, um, and now we have what I think is starting to get, become a little bit more meaty, um, be more diverse and inclusive in what you do, right? Um, this takes a lot of forms, um, like at the con. See, you were looking at your phone and I just bum rushed you, so. <laughs> she, I, I, can I read it? You can read it now, yeah, it's like 10 words. This starts way early, okay, got it. Got it, so at the con. At the con what? Oh my God. <laughs> Students. Oh, right. Okay. This goes back to the thing where I said I've got a real soft spot for bringing, bringing the youngins into the con. I, um, I love having them here. Did you get more water? Yeah, I'm just getting confused. You're like all over me. This okay. is weird. Um, <laughs> it's what? <laughs> it's marriage. <laughs> marriage. Marriage. So, so I think the point that she might be trying to make. <laughs> Yeah, make it for me. Okay, I will. Okay, thanks. Um, I have no idea what point I'm making. So for a lot of us that got into this industry, like around the time that I did, uh, it was super tech heavy. It was a very uh, interpersonal thing. You're going to conferences. You're learning on the job. Uh, it favored um, uh, really, you know, white males with the resources to be able to travel around and do this and learn and could support themselves and whatever. And it was not a very diverse workforce. Still is not a very diverse workforce, right? Um, and you don't solve that day one by just being like, I'll just hire a more diverse workforce, right? Like, it starts early days, like when they're kids and they're students and they have a spark and they have an interest and, you know, they want to learn more about this space, where do you go? Where do you go when you're in high school to learn about cybersecurity and hacking? Where, where do you go when you're in college? And, and by and large, it's the same types of things. It's like, you could take some classes. When you take a computer security class, your computer security class in computer security 101 is not a fantastically interesting course, right? Like it might be, but you're lucky if it is, right? And it could actually turn you off. But if you can come to an event like this and you see a big group of people who, who have all these different experiences and that lights your spark and then you join, 
that's awesome. You're adding to the collective. You're adding to everything that we are. And by having more students come here, even the service members from the different service academies and everything, it helps create that more diverse pool. The thing that I really love about the, the hacker culture um, and, and, and being involved with it um, for as, as long as, as we've been involved is the inclusivity and the uh, acceptedness, right? Like, um, there are a lot of people here that fall kind of outside the median of society <laughs> when it comes to lots of different ways of viewing uh, ourselves. And I have not seen a group that's as embracing uh, and accepting of that as I have in the hacker and the security community um, over the years. And it's not to say that there aren't problems and there haven't been uh, you know, issues, but, but in general, we're a very accepting crew. Um, and I, one of my concerns is as we grow, and we become more uh, mature, and this is a profession, and this is our jobs, we may have a trend to be less accepting of that, right? Some of these people may be viewed as like, oh, they're old school hackers, and they're kind of weird, or they're young school hackers, and they're kind of weird. No, like, we're all in this together. Like, we need to include people. Um, and, and I feel pretty, pretty strongly about that. And I know, um, you know, I've not been the most socially normal person my entire life, and I felt like I had a home uh, in this community, and we feel like we, should give a home to, to anybody that comes here as well. So, um, what? Oh, nothing. Okay. I was, I was just agreeing with your statement in my head. Oh, that I'm not the most socially <laughs> normal person in the world. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we can all agree that that's a truism. So, um, how do you apply this to your daily life, right? In your job, in, in your family, and in, in whatever you do. Um, you know, it takes lots of different forms, but it has to happen at every step. It's creating a safe environment for your kids and their friends. Uh, it's creating an environment at work that uh, welcomes uh, differing views, differing backgrounds, and understanding your own biases. Like, this is a big challenge to recognize the bias that you bring, because you think your experience is everyone's experience. I am super guilty of this, right? Like, I grew up in, our, in rural New York, um, in a, 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 woo, yeah, rednecks wow. for the win, yay! And like, so as an example of things that I think every kid goes through, we got our water from a spring. And like an artesian well, like water just flowed out of the ground and a pipe just rested there. And you knew when there was a dead animal in the spring because the water smelled funny. And my mom would say, Bruce, go up to the spring and fish out the dead woodchuck. And I would go up and I'd fish the dead woodchuck out of the spring and I'd throw it up in the weeds and she'd run the water for 10 minutes and the water was safe to drink again. <laughs> I assumed everyone else had similar experience of getting the woodchuck out of the spring and it turns out most people have not had that problem. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not a euphemism, it literally is an actual thing. So, um, but, you know, so I have a bias about people's backgrounds and, like, what they are, what others are capable of doing, like, around the house when it comes to housework and that kind of thing, like, maintaining your house. And, I mean, that's obviously not a tech example, but it's an example in which I know I have a personal bias, and some people feel very uncomfortable with their own houses, and they have to have a lot of help to maintain it, and, like, that's totally okay, because they come from, from, uh, from different backgrounds. So, um, you know, recognizing those biases, uh, you know, and, and, and thinking from the other person's perspective, and how do you take those biases out? So, one thing that we've started doing, you want to talk about the, the training? The, the train. Or security training. Training. Oh, security. Oh, I'm like, do you want to talk about the train? Choo -choo. I'm like, I don't know what we're talking about. Um, so one of the things that we do um, here is we have sec uh, training sessions for our security staff. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Not, not the train, but the training. Yeah, training. Got I -N -G. it. Yeah. Um, and because we believe that it's not good enough just to say, you know, email security at schmoocon.org. It's more important that our staff knows how to respond to those incidents. So we, um, we host two training sessions. Um, everybody um, on security is required to attend. We have them at my house. Yeah. And so, like, what? Nothing. Do you have more? Do you, do you like when we do this? No. No, not really. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, we, we talk about like what to do in different situations, how to recognize, um, you know, their own uh, uh, biases, how to recognize, um, you know, and, and deal with things like harassment and, and stuff like that, including like phrases that you can use and should never use. When someone comes up to you and says, if they're talking about uh, harassment activity, sexual harassment, that kind of thing, your first response should never be, are you sure, right? Like, because that instantly invalidates the person. And if you're a big, gruff dude, and, and you've never been a victim of any of this kind of thing before in your life, and you say, are you sure, to someone who feels like they've just been harassed or assaulted, that shuts them down immediately, and you are not able to see from the other person's eyes what a phrase that has almost no bearing in your mind instantly shuts the person down. So it's stuff like that where 
um, you know, we are conscious of it and we try to make sure that we can arm like at least the staff here to be aware of it as well and think through that. And so this is, like I said, it happens every day and it happens unintentionally because we have different backgrounds and we don't think about the way, you know, other people's experiences and what they brought to the table and how they'd be infected by, by our deeds. Um, another thing that I think is kind of important um, is being aware of, of yourself and your own personal needs. Now, this is a thing that I've struggled with a lot because I know a lot of us have prided ourselves on like all the work we did in our spare time, right? Like that's how I got in this industry. I, I mean, we lived in a little tiny uh, duplex with the guy named Shmoo. It was three of us in an 800 person duplex. The fact that none of us killed each other is a goddamn miracle. Um, and the original Shmoo server was a gateway Pentium 120 that lived under my desk. Under my desk, but he always takes the credit. She just wanted a foot warmer. Uh, <laughs> So uh, that box, uh, you know, we hacked on that thing. Like, we just beat the hell out of it, and we ran servers and ran our own mail server and web servers and DNS server and just figured it all out. And then we broke it all, and then we fixed it, and we broke it all again, and that's how we learned. And that was, like, what we did in our spare time. And that's how I learned cybersecurity. And after that, like, the Schmoo group was all, what? I was just going to say, we also played a lot at Mario Kart. <laughs> a lot of Mario Kart. There was some Mario Kart mixed in for, for good measure. Woo-hoo, old school Mario Kart. Um, and then even the Schmoo group, like, that was all side work, like none of us got paid to do schmoo stuff. Uh, we just did it. So we did projects and, and you know, uh, uh, a lot of presentations and raised hell at DEF CON and all that kind of thing. But it was hundreds, thousands of hours amongst the group, all in our spare time. And in hindsight, like a lot of it was social, like we got a lot out of it from the social perspective, but it was also this insane tax on us for being in this industry to have to learn all in our spare time just to be employable because our employers expected to have the, all these skills, right? And so we as an industry have grown up with this idea that like it's awesome that you do this stuff in your spare time and you should do more in your spare time so you can show your employer how awesome you are and your next employer how awesome you are. And your employer can be like, do you know this cool new technology? But no, but I'll read about it this weekend and I'll get smart on it instead of spending time with my family and doing things for myself, right? That's not okay. There aren't a lot of other professions, right, that, that really have that, because we're new, right? We've been doing this for 40 years. This is a new profession, and so much of it has been learned on the side that our culture is all about doing it on the side. So I would encourage you when you leave here to try to, you know, if, if you are an employer, you know, give your staff the opportunity to learn on the job and go home and have a life, right? And if you are employed, then try to talk to your employer about like, hey, maybe can I take some time to do this at work? And if the answer is no, like maybe get your resume ready and go find another place to work that's a little more healthy and understands this. And I recognize with reckless abandon how hypocritical this is as we have a weekend conference. <laughs> but I like to think that this is a lot of socially exciting. This is, oh, okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Anyway, um, I, I've struggled with this a lot in the last few years um, because there is this legacy, like even, even the con, like, right? It is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Monday, you get to go to work. And, and again, I think for the most part, like, this is as much a social event as it is a learning event. But, you know, if you find yourself in your spare time doing all this stuff just to keep your job or whatever, like, think about talking to your employer. Think about changing that. Um, and, and to be frank, I'm here to chat about it. If people want to like find me on Twitter, I'm GDead. I'm happy to talk about this. I've had quite an exploration personally to try to fence off my time so that I get time with family. Um, and, and I think about it a lot, so I'm happy to chat about that. Um, next, the last one. It's getting pretty deep. I recognize it's not a normal thing. And people are egressing either because they're sick of hearing me or there's a line for t-shirts. So are you getting a t-shirt, sir? Yes, he is. All right. Excellent. <laughs> Woo! I thought maybe he didn't like me. Hey! <laughs> A couple other people are like, oh shit, it's three o'clock, run, run! We're really almost done, um, almost but I done. thought you learned your lesson about calling out people in the audience. I did, I called out a client once by mistake. That was like, sir, and he turned around, I was like, oh shit, you pay my bills. Uh, um, one last thing, um, try to be selfless and help others. Again, and the, and the idea of improving what you do every day. There's a lot of what we do every day that um, we could tell everyone how we do it. Right? This is something I do at work all the time. I'm pretty passionate about. If I solve a problem that you all are trying to solve too, I'm just going to release it. It's not a competitive differentiator. How I do third-party risk management doesn't change my job materially if you do it the same way. So here's how we do it. Here's how we measure risk. Here's how we do it. 
can be open source like GPL. It can be open source like Creative Commons. Here's a thing that we do that we all do. Learn from it. Push it forward. Um, you know, and and there there's an, so much intellectual property that doesn't need to be property that we can all just share around the same challenges that we face all the time. So. Um, I think that, that if you go, again, go to your job and think like, what am I doing now that I could push forward and make public? You'll find there's a lot of things that will be helpful for the greater good. So, on that note, um, Heidi and I would like to, to issue a challenge to you to not necessarily go out and do something new. Don't take step zero. You can do that too. You can if you want. But on step 117, try to do that step better, right? Try to improve yourself and what you're doing around you in this industry a little bit. And, and we would like to hear from you and maybe talk about it next year. So if you find a thing, you walk out of here and you're motivated enough just to take the next step a little bit better than you were before, let us know. Uh, hashtag it on Twitter. Uh, we just came up with this one. I don't think there's a single Potter challenge on here on Twitter unless there's something with Harry Potter and then we're fucked. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh my God. I didn't even look. I didn't even think about that. Right we might now. change this, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you do, if you do do something different, please um, let us know. Uh, we'd love to be able to tell a few stories next year about how we we changed things and made the world a little bit better. Um, do you have an announcement? I was gonna wait till you were done. I am done. All right. Well, my announcement was we're done. The um, the next talk starts at 3:30. 3:30. In this room, so we hope many of you will come back. What's the first talk? Somebody? Bueller? Anyone? Moose versus Woodchuck. Moose versus Woodchuck. Carnage you know you want to see that. All right. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next year.